Well, hey everybody, welcome back to Mask Hikes. Uh, time for the uh, obligatory, I guess, <laughs> what's in your pack video. I'm heading off to the AT, actually in a pretty short time. It's less than 20 days, I think it's 19 days. Um, and uh, I haven't made a video in quite a while, so I figured I'd better get after this and get this video out so y'all can tell me that all the crap I've got is wrong. <laughs> Let's get after it. For those of you that watched my video last year before I headed out, um, when my hike got cut short thanks to uh, COVID, some of this will be similar, uh, but I also changed up a couple of things, uh, namely two of my big three items. So uh, I did learn one thing on the AT for five days and that was that a single wall tent in the middle of March in Georgia is not for me. So uh, that's one major change. And then as you can tell, the pack is another major change. So, so let's take a look. First and foremost, luxury item number one, Silver Shadow Carbon Umbrella. As I mentioned, I was on the AT for about five days last year. And I'll tell you what, this thing saw more use than any other piece of gear. It was up probably 70% of the time. Uh, I had it up on the Colorado Trail. Uh, man, this thing is epic. Uh, it, it basically makes it so that I don't have to wear a, a raincoat. And I was in some pretty good storms. Um, I do carry a rain jacket with me just as a backup, but I think in, I don't know, a couple... 300 miles of hiking with this thing, I've maybe had a rain jacket on for about two miles. On the back of my pack here, I'll take them off just so you can see the whole pack, but these are what I've ended up with in terms of camp shoes. Just some cheap little Walmart water shoes. Uh, I They're not the lightest thing. They're lighter than Crocs. Um, I got to the point where I was sick of having Crocs dangle from my pack. Uh, it just looks ridiculous. So I swapped out to a pair of flip-flops the flip-flops were great, other than the fact that in March, you really don't want to take your socks off and walking in flip-flops and socks is kind of a chore, especially if you're walking up a muddy slope trying to get to a to a uh, latrine or something like that. So uh, I ended up going with these, at least for the beginning. I may swap to just some regular shower shoes when the weather warms up and I don't need socks all the time. But for the moment, these are my uh, my camp shoes, just because they, they give a little bit more they go on your feet a little better. They stay on. It's nice. Um, of course, this is the new pack. Superior Wilderness Designs uh, long, or DCF Long Haul 40. Waited a long time for this to show up. Went round and round about what pack I wanted to swap to. The Zerk just wasn't quite enough space. Uh, I, I had trouble getting everything packed in there, including food bag, and still be able to close it and, and actually feel like it was closed. Um, and the, the Gregory Zulu, I love that pack, but that pack weighs like almost four pounds. It's crazy for a 40 liter pack. It's comfortable, great features, but just, just too much. Uh, I looked at the Hyperlite Mountain Gear. I actually almost went with Hyperlite, but, you know, I don't really know. In the end, the features that this had just really kind of were the decision maker, and maybe I'll try and make a video specifically about this pack, a uh, review of this pack. Um, but I'm just not sure if I'll get to that before I get out, of, get out of Dodge. So, of course, the first piece of gear I pull out of my pack is one I'm still kind of on the fence about. Uh, I'm not sure if these are going with me or not. I'm not 100% solid. Uh, more than likely they will. Uh, they're only like four and a half ounces, but uh, it's just one of those one of those things that I have another pair of gloves. I have some liner gloves in here. Um, and the, the show gloves, these went back in my pack the last couple of weeks, you know, when it's been below zero and I've been trying to get outside. And uh, I'll tell you what, these are, these are awesome. These are just some Marmot uh, shell gloves and uh, incredibly warm. Incredibly warm, but probably more than I'm gonna need. 
I'm just thinking about the potential of utilizing them when I'm sleeping, but I haven't decided yet. Like I said, there is a, in my uh, Cold Gear Ditty bag, there is a, a pair of uh, liner gloves in here. I'll get to those in a minute. Spare bottle. If you need to know what that is, trust me, go back and backpack in a few nights in the rain and you'll, you'll figure out real quick what that's for. What else we got in here? Oh, there's the rain jacket that I take with me. That is just a Frog Togs uh, rain jacket. No pit zips or anything, just real basic, light. I have a Marmot pre-sip, but the, that jacket alone weighs like 11 ounces, and I think that's like, like three ounces or something. And again, with the umbrella, it almost never gets used, so for me, it just isn't worth carrying the extra weight and the better quality gear. Then I have this bad boy. I actually have not used this yet. This is a rain kilt. It's just a cheap little Amazon rain kilt. But again, I almost never put on my rain pants. And when I did, the rain pants that go with that set, even though they're supposed to be a medium, and they look like MC Hammer parachute pants. It's ridiculous. Uh, so I, I think I got this for like seven bucks on Amazon. I thought, you know what, I'm gonna give it a try. Easier to get on and off. I'm gonna get covered in mud anyway, so really what's the point? Headlamp is a uh, black diamond spot. It's a, I think it's a 330 lumen headlamp. Uh, I have several headlamps and I, I've stuck with this one because it has a lockout feature. Cook system. In here is a Tokes uh, 900 liter or milliliter pot. And a uh, just a cheap little Amazon BRS stove. I've used several of these now. Uh, I did have to replace one because I put too big a pot on it and it heated up. And that's one thing I will tell you about these things. Uh, they heat up so well that they'll actually like heat the metal up. And if you've got too heavy a pot on there, you can actually bend those prongs. You know, it's not a jet boil. It's not an, uh, any of the big names, but for the money, you can't beat it. They're awesome. I got fuel and a lighter in there, and then I do have this little Ziploc bag full of, uh, well, this is just cotton balls with uh, Vaseline on them, and basically it's fire starter. If you've never tried it out before, they're, they're pretty sweet. Basically, you just, I mean, like I said, it's just Vaseline on a cotton ball, and it doesn't take much. One little uh, cotton ball will start pretty much any fire for you. And while I don't plan on starting too many fires on the AT, uh, I take those with me because my son, my younger son, expects a fire pretty much every time we backpack. So, uh, wet wipes. I do have an extra can of fuel that I'm starting out with just because that one that's in there has been used quite a bit and I'm not sure what's left in there. I probably should just swap to the new can and get it over with. But. Okay, let's look over here in the side pocket. This is kind of my water system, spare water. Uh, smart water bottle. Sawyer squeeze. Um, I have had to replace the filter in there, or not the filter, the uh, gasket in this once. So as a result, in my uh, ditty bag in here, I do have some extra gaskets. But it really, that's not that big a deal. It just kind of leaks everywhere when, when you try and use it. My uh, deuce of spades for digging cat holes. And I do carry, and again, this, some might say this is kind of a, a luxury item, I guess. No, I, I don't really see it as a luxury item. I don't fill dirty water into my smart water bottles. I fill, I use a, a dirty bag for, for getting water out of streams and, and, and sites. And then I attach my Sawyer onto my dirty bag and directly onto my smart water bottle. And that's how I, I filter water. That's 
It's the way I do it. Other people do it differently. A lot of guys are, and maybe I'll end up sending that Canuck back, uh, home by the end uh, and just going straight into one bottle and filtering into the other. I've never been comfortable putting the, the uh, filter directly on top of the bottle and drinking out of it. I, I'm always afraid I'm going to break the filter off. And, you know, when these things are almost 40 bucks, it's not worth risking. So that's that pocket. At the moment, I don't have anything in this but this uh, hip pocket. That will be my uh, my backup camera, which is actually my tunes and my uh, books and, and things like that. That's what I keep on on there. And headphones and snacks and things like that will more than likely be in that pocket. Over in this pocket, excuse me, is the beginnings of one of my second major changes in terms of the big three. Last year I left to Georgia with a uh, Six Moon Designs Lunar Solo. It's a great tent, I love it, but it's a single wall tent and uh, the condensation was so bad in Georgia that when the rain would start in the middle of the night, it was pretty much like it was raining inside the tent because it would hit, rain would hit the outside of the tent and it would just rattle all the condensation loose on the inside of the tent. And it just really got on my nerves uh, to the point that I ended up, uh, after I got back and uh, was looking at my REI dividends, I found a sale on REI and I had a bunch of dividends and basically got this tent for next to nothing. This is a uh, Big Agnes Tiger Wall uh, UL2 Platinum. Um, I've been meaning and meaning to do a review on that tent because it's actually a pretty sweet tent. Um, and it's, it's relatively light. It's, dang it, I'm not even sure now, but it, it's right around two pounds. Um, maybe 2.5, something in that neighborhood. Don't quote me because I'm not 100% certain, but it's light. And comparatively to the Lunar Solo, which was like 24 ounces, the comfort of having the double wall was just, it was kind of a no-brainer for me. I decided to swap it out and, and go with that double wall tent just to be more comfortable. Um, I do I do use uh, just some cheap little Shepherd Hook titanium tent stakes that I got off Amazon for like 12 bucks. Uh, and these things have been awesome for me. Uh, they cut through just about anything when you're trying to use them. Um, Pretty nice little tent stake. This is a uh, Justin UL water bottle uh, pocket that I got off of Etsy. Uh, great guy, uh, great great product. I've got two of them. I've got this one. I've got one on my Zerk, and then my son actually has one as well. He's got one of the. He makes two different sizes. This is for the the one liter bottle, and then the smaller bottle. He makes a a pocket specifically for that as well. My son has one of those on his uh, pack as well. It's awesome. Quick access. Um, the only thing I don't like is you really need two hands to put your bottle back in because, <laughs> I mean, it's just it's just kind of a, a, a chore to get it back into your pocket, but not a big deal. This, of course, is Dash. Um, for those of you that don't know me, Dash goes with me everywhere. Um, my kids have a larger version called Flash, and basically it's our way of staying connected when I'm out on trail and not with them. Other feature about this uh, long haul that I, I selected was the ability, these, these packs come with uh, a foam insert, just uh, standard, but for a little bit extra cash you can get this uh, Velcro added so you can remove that foam insert as well as I believe the uh, uh, aluminum uh, frame rods that are in there um, but I, the way my sleep system works uh, I, I've always because of the Zerk I always took my uh, Z-Lite pad with me as a back pad in that Zerk pack so it kind of became second nature for my sleep system to have this and a Neo Air um, 
you know, again, maybe folks are going to say that's overkill, but for me, it's just a matter of not having to have this shipped to me when I want to switch from the Neo Air because I, I, I prefer this. And the only time I really spend the effort to blow up the Neo Air is on those really cold nights where I want that extra insulation. Um, so yeah, I guess a lot of folks might say carrying two sleeping pads is uh, another luxury item. But for me, it really, it's just kind of a habit at this point. It wasn't a luxury item in the past because it was actually my back pad. Um, so now I just take out that foam pad that the pack comes with and I put this on here and that's how I rock it. This pack has, um, uh, I can't remember which one it comes, I think it comes standard with the Y strap for the top closure. Um, I added on these straps over here. These guys are actually removable. You can take them off down in here. Um, but I prefer to close my pack down the sides. I think it seals better. Um, and then I haven't fully decided yet if I'm going to try and keep my food bag in here, which I'm fairly confident now that I'll have plenty of room for. Otherwise, if I've got a real heaping food bag, then that bad boy just sits right on top up there. And uh, you don't have to worry about whether or not it fits. Uh, the other nice thing about this is these straps are long enough specifically for if you had a bear canister, you know, bear vault or, or whatever, that you could get that on top as well if you preferred. Uh, that being said, these packs, although I don't have a bear vault, so I can't test it out, supposedly these packs are big enough in the base that the bear vault, I think the 3000 or whatever it is, the standard one, fits right in there and, and uh, it would fit in the pack if you really wanted it to. So since I've uh, pretty much went over 90% of my food, uh, we'll just hit this and be done with it. This is a Z-Pax bear bag, the hanging system. It's got the, the rock bag and the rope in there. Um, again, if I have time, I'll do a food video. Um, my thing, personally, the only thing I would throw out, specifically in terms of the way I do food, is I do an op sack inside of the, the Z-Pax bag uh, just as an added measure uh, and I do tend to carry I've got the, the koozie the homemade koozie on my pot which you saw but it doesn't really hold food very well when you're reheating a north side or Ziploc bag full of uh, oatmeal or whatever. So I got this in the mail for something. I don't even remember what it was. And uh, I mean, this is Reflectix and it's perfect. Just the exact right size. You can put a north side in there. I don't have to worry about it. Set it, you know, lean it up against something. And you're golden. It keeps your, your food insulated while it's warming up. And to be honest, trying to throw this in there to uh, keep it up out of the bear, bear reach is a lot easier than putting that whole pot in my, uh, my bear bag every night. Because the only thing that really ends up in there is, is water. But if I'm cooking in there and the food overflows in the, the koozie, then I'm just up a creek without a paddle, so. Let's get to the meat and potatoes. get it out of there but as you can see I do favor Osprey dry bags um, they're light compared to a Cedar Summit and I've uh, had a lot of success with them 
So as I start pulling out ditty bags and different stuff, you're going to notice that I pull out a bunch of these. It's just my organizing system. A lot of guys just stuff everything in their pack, and that's fine. Um, I found with my old pack that I had to organize better. Otherwise, sometimes the pack would fit right, and sometimes the pack wouldn't. So to guarantee that I was making it fit right every time, I had to had to organize things better in it. Just another one of those things that stuck. This is my Big Agnes tent, minus obviously the, the tent poles and the floor, the footprint. Um, this is the the footprint that comes with the tent. I have Polycro from the the Six Moon. Um, I could probably save a few ounces by taking that with me. The thing I like about this is I can throw this up, put the rods up, the poles up, and throw the fly over and have a really quick shelter with minimal effort if I'm getting soaked. Whereas with the Polycro, there's really no way to make a floor. I can make a rain cover, but I wouldn't have a floor for it. So just one of those trade-offs I decided to stick with the footprint uh, unless I can actually modify piece of Tyvek or, or Polycro to have grommets, which is something I just haven't got around to messing with. But then I put the, uh, the tent body and fly in there, so if it is put away wet, it's not just getting stuffed in my pack wet, um, and I don't have to worry about trying to find a pocket to fit it in on the outside so I'm not getting everything wet. I do have a towel. Um, just a rain leaf towel. I don't even remember. I take a towel with me. A lot of people maybe don't. I, again, it's not something I would consider a luxury item. Uh, for me, if you're, you never know what you're gonna need something to wipe off with. Um, it's just something that I've always taken with me. I do use a uh, trash compactor bag as a liner. These uh, Superior Wilderness packs are supposed to be pretty waterproof, but I don't use a uh, I don't use a rain cover, so I, I just throw that extra couple ounces in in that that compactor bag for a little bit more rain protection. Like I said, as I start pulling things out, you'll notice a lot of off-grid dry bags. Again, that's just kind of my organizing system. Let's go straight into my, I guess, second slash third uh, luxury item. I have used dozens upon dozens of inflatable pillows, um, off-market off-brand stuff off Amazon some brand name stuff see to summit uh, etc and I've never had one last I did buy a thermal rest inflatable pillow that seems pretty tough and I've always been pleased with my thermal rest pads uh, but I found this guy on sale on Amazon Actually, it might have been in Sierra Trading. I don't even remember, but uh, clocks in at about nine ounces. And I'll tell you what, the comfort level compared to any inflatable pillow is insane. I know it probably looks like nothing, but it's filled with memory foam cubes. And uh, so all you do is you open it up and you fluff it up a little bit like that. And then you let it set while you're getting ready for bed or whatever you're doing. And those memory foam cubes puff back up. And it's pretty much a real pillow. Um, so for 9 ounces compared to you know, 3 ounces of an inflatable, it, yeah, I mean it's basically carrying 3 pillows, but I got a real pillow that I know is going to poof up every night versus some cheap little garbage that might fill up but by midnight it's completely flat so so I'm gonna set this down and then I'll show you again a little bit later 
just to seem to see how much it poops. So then in, in terms of my sleep system, again, I, I carry that z -Lite pad, but I do have a Neo Air. Um, it is the older model. So, I mean, you can hear, loud as all get out. I don't carry the, pow the pouch with me. I just have a little homemade uh, strap that I throw around it, and then I do keep my quilt pads on there as well. But uh, for those really cold nights or when you just feel like you need to get off the ground, it's great. Um, it does have its downsides. If you're not on a perfectly level spot, I tend to seem like I'm sliding off it. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, yeah, I mean, if I can avoid using a, an inflatable pad, I'd rather not. Second part of my sleep system would be this guy right here. This is a X-Pen pump sack modified to actually work on the Thermarest pump. And inside of it, I keep my Cedar Ridge LeConte 10 degree quilt. I have several Cedar Ridge quilts. I have this one. I have a 40 degree. Uh, my son actually has a zero degree cub quilt, which he absolutely loves. Uh, I, full disclosure, I am not a brand ambassador. I'm not an affiliate, anything like that. Uh, but I will pimp these quilts till the day I die. Action. The boys and girls down at Cedar Ridge are awesome. Their gear is epic. I love it. This one um, has a sewn foot box. My 40 degree has a snap foot box, so it basically can pop out to a blanket. Um, I Honestly, I can't remember my son's cub. I think it has a snap foot box as well. Uh, that's what he picked. Um, they put... Uh, Pull cords in the top, so you can cinch this down around your head. Uh, a couple of clips in there to give you a little bit added. And then again, your, your pad strap clips. Like I said, this is a 10 degree quilt. Last week, the temperatures around here got well, well below zero at night. And I mean, we're talking like negative 20-ish. Um, one night, I took it out. I didn't go backpacking. I was just in, in the front yard. But I took this thing out, and it was easily five below. Uh, I had on basically what you're looking at, jeans, a hoodie, and a ball cap. And uh, I didn't even ha have, like, wool socks on. I had on just Walmart gym, shop, gym socks. And I had the Z-Lite, the Neo Air, and this. And I laid outside for about two hours and never got cold once. Um, I didn't get it quite cinched down around my head enough, so I had a little bit of a breeze blowing in. Um, because of the way I was situated, I was playing on my phone and things like that. Um, but if I'd have been trying to sleep and just cinched this down around my head, I'll tell you what. Whew. Heaven and a down package. Okay, so last couple of bags here. This one is just my cold weather gear, like my extreme cold weather gear. Um, this guy would normally be stuffed in here as well. And then this stuff just kind of sits on the top of my pack for quick access. These are, I guess, part of my sleep system. These are some Aegis Max down booties. Just for a little bit of extra toe warmth. These guys are pretty darn warm, pretty impressive. They pack down to next to nothing. They weigh next to nothing. Um, and for just a little bit of extra comfort at night, those are awesome. A uh, buff merino wool beanie. And then as I mentioned at the beginning, just some liner gloves. And this is typically all that would come with me. Uh, just a pair of mar marmot liner gloves. Um, I just... 
But the way that the weather has been lately, and the temperatures, I just got a feeling that this year is going to be one of those worse than most years. And I'm going to get into the Smokies and possibly need some extra, you know, extra protection so my fingers don't turn purple. So I'm really on the fence about those uh, uh, shell gloves. No decisions have been made yet, but I guess you'll find out when we get out there, those of you that follow along, whether or not I'm crying about my fingers being frigid or not. <laughs> this is a clothes bag. Really not any point in going through there. I got extra pair of ex officios, extra pair of darn tufts, a uh, set of Moreno Wool 250, uh, Smart Wool 250, top and bottom to sleep in, extra shirt, pair of town shorts, that's about everything in there, no real shocker kind of items in there, I guess the only other item, part of my clothing, groovy little buff, uh, neck gaiter, that goes with me pretty much everywhere. This is my randoms ditty bag. This has got my electronics and my first aid, if you want to call it that. Kind of my emergency ditty bag. I am blogging, obviously. So this is my electronics bag. Some extra batteries for my lamp, an anchor, dual port, charger, wall charger for my insane battery brick with uh, my groovy little sticker on it. This is a anchor 26,000 milliamp battery brick. Um, it's got dual charging ports so I can actually charge this with both of those with these two cords right here and theoretically it charges faster I can get this fully charged in about four hours but then I also brought along I'm also bringing along so that uh, while that's charging if I'm sitting somewhere I can also actually charge my phone directly so I've got an extra wall port and a phone cord a USB-C phone cord for my um, Google Pixel that I actually, that's my, my dedicated cell phone. And on that cell phone, I'll be running, obviously, all my blogging and editing software. Uh, I'll have gut hooks on there. I have gut hooks on there for my nav. Um, and Facebook, things like that. But most of my other software will get deleted just to save storage because that goofy Google phone doesn't have an external storage. So as a result, I have to pretty much stay on top of my editing. Otherwise, I'm eventually going to run out of storage. It's pretty annoying. Which is part of the reason I carry this as a backup because this does have an external storage. It's an old Samsung uh, S7. And again, this will have all my music on it, my audio books. Um, but then it'll be a backup for video and, and audio, or video and uh, photos if I need it. Last thing in here is, again, my, my backup bag. Um, I'm not going to go too much into detail on this bag because there really is a bunch of random stuff in here. So really what I've got going on here is just some uh, Tylenol, some antacids. Uh, uh, I've got a, a cycle of doxycycline in case I feel like I got Lyme. I start showing symptoms of Lyme, I can start that doxycycline. If I know I'm not going to be able to get to a, a, a emergency room or a VA hospital or something like that in a timely manner, that'll at least get me going on the, the treatment there's no downside to taking the doxycycline. Um, so if I get in there and they test me and they say, no, you're fine, 
it's not a big deal. Um, better safe than sorry. I also have another uh, uh, medication in here that's supposed to be good for treating uh, allergic reactions. Not really allergic reactions, uh, but like if you got poison ivy, poison oak, things along that line, um, that's what that other medication in there is for. But again, it's just medications that are backups um, in case of that bag, I think weighs an ounce and a half. So for me, it's it's, not a, it's kind of a no-brainer. pair of earplugs, because if you've ever been in a shelter, you know you want earplugs. Uh, body glide with some uh, Luco tape wrapped around it. Um, I used to carry the whole roll of Luco tape. But I I don't think I've ever personally used Luco tape once. I've used it on my son once, my oldest son, and I've let another hiker borrow it once. But personally, I've never used it. So to carry that huge roll of Luco tape, I finally decided it was completely ridiculous. And I was carrying the body glide anyway, so it kind of made. Uh, logistical sense just to put it on the, the tube of body glide because I don't go through either one of them fast enough to uh, think that I, I made a poor decision putting the Luco tape on the body glide. Um, they're both just kind of emergency first aid if you will. So as a result, that's kind of how I've done with that. Um, Dental floss, <laughs> whew, <laughs> uh, which is twofold, obviously to keep my teeth clean, but then as well as um, you can use it as a sewing needle, things like that if you really need it. Patch kit for the uh, thermo rest. A couple extra lighters just as a backup. A couple extra uh, little rip cord or uh, strap cords. I do carry just a small bottle of the potable aqua, just in case, God forbid, I were to lose or something were to happen to my Sawyer. Just another one of those things that, for the trade-off and the, you know, the ounce weight, it's kind of like, why, why wouldn't I just throw it in there? And then as I mentioned, I carry, these are just extra little baggies, um, hotel ice bags, honestly, that I snag, and then I can put my phone my electronics in them and put them in my pocket when it's uh, raining and I'm hiking just to keep a, my my cell phone a little protected. This is uh, obviously a smart water lid but in here I've got two Sawyer gaskets and at the very bottom you can't really see it but in the very bottom in a little baggie is the o-ring for the my BRS stove so if I were to lose the o-ring for the stove, I've got to back up one of those just to be able to, uh, so I can still cook and not waste a whole ton of gas while I turn on my, my stove. The last, uh, I guess, first aid item, if you want to call all that stuff that, emergency item would be a uh, little bottle of hand sanitizer that goes on the front of my pack. Um, I actually just had to replace, well, actually I haven't even gotten one on this new pack yet, so that's why this was just sitting here and not on the pack. Okay, so last, I guess, but not least, would be my trekking poles. Uh, just an old pair of Lecky uh, Cristallo AS trekking poles. The only thing I don't like about these compared to the newer models is the quick clip is only on the top um, versus on the bottom. This is the twist style. Not a real big deal. I, I almost never break them down anyway so it doesn't really matter anymore but uh, I do have uh, on both trekking poles just in case God forbid I were to lose one I've got a little bit of uh, duct tape. Obviously, as we all know, duct tape is a cure-all. Kind of sits right next to the, the dental floss in terms of most versatile items in your kit. And then the last thing that I carry on my trek and pull is my uh, 
tripod. Uh, I like it because this is, I mean, this is a tripod, but it's also got this Velcro. So if you wanted to strap it to a tree branch or something like that, you could do that. And uh, it's, it's pretty versatile. And then obviously the Manfrotto uh, phone clip just clips right on, it's lockable. It's just really versatile as far as ability to uh, utilize it in multiple places. Um, you can stick your tractor pole in the ground and you pretty much have a, a nice tall tripod. Um, just multiple options, multiple uses for that guy. And for me, like I said, it's just easier to keep it stored on my trekking pole than to worry about trying to find a place to put it in my pack or things like that. So that's pretty much all my gear. Let's real quick, while we're here, go ahead and take a look at this bad boy. And like I said, look at that. And it's been maybe 20, 25 minutes between cuts and things like that on the actual time frame. And uh, it'll actually poof up even more, but... I mean, that's basically a real pillow at this point. And that is by far one of my favorite items. Um, like I said, for the weight, it's nine ounces compared to a three ounce inflatable pillow. That's never gonna fail on me. I've had pillows fail so many times, it's ridiculous. So, that pretty much goes with me everywhere. And they actually make multiple sizes. I think this is the medium, maybe. There might be a smaller one, uh, and there's definitely bigger. Uh, I actually saw one, it was an extra large. It was basically a real pillow. I mean, if you're not going for that far and don't care about the extra weight, it probably weighed about a pound-ish, pound and a half maybe. But I mean, it's a real flipping pillow. <laughs> so the last thing I wanna talk about is potential gear changes due to weather. Uh, by that, what I mean is, you know, we hit mid-May, the weather starts warming up, and I don't need half of this stuff because it's just overkill. You know, if I do end up taking the shell gloves, obviously those aren't going to go with me the whole way. That's just four ounces of extra weight that there's no reason. Um, the biggest change that I will have will be from the 10-degree quilt to the 40-degree quilt. And this is my, uh, like I said, it's uh, a 40 degree Cedar Ridge Lacante quilt. So that will definitely be a swap that's made probably mid-May. The other change that will most likely occur is a bounce box will be situated. Just a handful of things that I'm sure by then there won't be any reason to keep them along. So just throw those in a bounce box and start moving them up on me until I get to the whites or any point in time where I'm feel like I might need them again. I'll get all this packed back up and we will take a look and see what it all weighs. Okay, so keep it in mind that I never claim to be ultralight. I do have several admittedly luxury items in there. And I did go ahead and throw in those shell gloves just in case they make the cut. Um, we are going for base weight though, so I left my water bottles and my food bag out. So let's see what we've got. Eighteen point four pounds. Now again, there are definitely items in here that we know are going to go away at some point on the trip. I, I would guess that by May I'm somewhere around sixteen pounds base weight, which for me that's more than adequate. This is what I've been training with anyway, uh, including the water and the food. This is not. There's like two days worth of food in there, so obviously there's not a full food bag, but it gets my body used to it and having it on there, plus it lets me figure out how I'm going to situate the pack and things like that. But yeah, I, like I said, I, I'm confident in the gear, I'm confident in its abilities to do what I need it to do, and I'm just ready to get going. So I invite you to join me. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe, hit that like button. Once the videos start rolling out, I would love to have you join along. As always, wish you were here.